Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome, and welcome back. Alright, so, change of project here. And, what you'll see is a sample track, sample terrain, rather than the Polygon um, City asset pack from City Studios. Uh, put in the same spline mesh track system, made some fixes to that, and a change from the last video in the track generator blueprint where you're actually changing the current track number from text to a name and you're changing things out here you're gonna have to bring out here do a two text integer and then <laughs> you're gonna have to convert it to text I know. Um, convert text to string. Even though it was a string before, we have to convert it to a string. And then from a string, we have to convert it to a name. We can't just take text to name. There is no text to name node. So we have to convert it from what it, it currently is now, a text value, or a, into an, a string, and then into a name. I hope that makes sense. So you're going to have two conversion nodes right there to link back up to where it is right here so you have name for current track number. So hopefully that should fix the issue of constantly showing zero for the track number. And over here we've got the current track number which is two text and then set text uh, node. So the only thing I've done is I've changed this node of course here and then I've added a two text name so that's the only changes that I've made to the track generator and I have also changed out the vehicle you can see no mouse cursor so we're using the City Studios uh, muscle car from the Polygon City pack and you'll notice there is sound now as well and it still drives horrible you can hit tab go to the in car view it still works just fine. I moved the uh, speed over just a little bit and I changed it from kilometers per hour to miles per hour. It's not going to be reflected correctly, but whatever. I'm American. I like, I like my American miles per hour, not kilometers per hour. Of course, even kilometers per hour would be off a little bit. But nonetheless, we have a working speedometer in car and gear and sound. We have a track that's good to go. We can drive on it and if we do go off the track and hit the wall over here, unfortunately that has no collision to it. So what I want to do now is I want to go to this guy and we're going to hit the magnifying glass. We're going to open that and we want to add a collision to it and unfortunately the only way to do that because it is a really big circle I love it and I love having it into the map um, all four of them add a nice touch to it I'm gonna do the dreaded and hate to do it but I'm gonna use complex collision as simple and hit save I don't like doing that but what we need is something to actually keep the player from going out of the world and this now becomes a, uh, a barricade to uh, prevent us from going out. So it now has a collision to it and prevents us from going through the rings and falling off the world. So it's going to prevent us from falling out of the world and that's a good thing. But let's go ahead and jump right into the meat and bones of this and I'm going to create a checkpoint system so that if something does happen, we get rolled over, or whatever else, then we have a way of fixing ourselves. So the first thing I need to do is actually have a um, an actual checkpoint. I want to have a visible checkpoint. I want to have something that I can see. It says, oh, okay, this is the checkpoint. Um, so many assets that you can work with in here. Um, That's a little bit too big. Let's 
go to the props. Now, if you're wondering how I converted the uh, City Studios car over and got it working correctly, uh, I've got other videos on doing that. All right, I think this is going to be good enough. So we hit play. Yeah, that should be good enough. It's high enough that we can pass through it, so that should be good. So what I'll do here is I'll take this, and since my tracker is at jaunty angles here, what I'll do is actually create a blueprint for this. Go to my assets folder, and I'm going to create another one called gadgets. I'm going to create a new blueprint class, actor, and we're going to call this check point blueprint. And we're going to be going back and forth between this and the player vehicle, but I just want to get started with this. So what I want to do is go back to my props folder, and we're using that guy. So I'll go back into it, and I'll add a component of static mesh. We'll call this left pole. And then we'll add another component, same thing, right pole. Now, I'm going to space these out, and I'm going to start off with 300 and 300. It probably needs to go wider than that, but we won't know until we actually put it in the map. So if we go back to my gadgets folder, and I'm going to drag this in here, and yeah, it's going to need to be rotated. We'll change rotation as we need to. So let's actually try these at 400 and 400. Take a look at it. It needs more. I'm just going to go ahead and stretch it out to 550. And that's the good thing about it is you can make your changes in here and immediately go back and see if that's where you need to be. And let's just go ahead and push it to 600. Actually, let's go to, yeah, 600 and 600. Well, 600 and negative 600. Still more. You know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go ahead and take it to 700. That should definitely be enough. Alright. Still not enough for me. So we'll just push it to 750. That should definitely be perfect. Yep, that works for me. Alright, so with that also, I want like a banner to go across the top. So let's look and see what we got in here for props, signs, whatever. Something we can put up there that um, can symbolize that we're going through a checkpoint. You can create your own custom, put numbers on it, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. I'm not going to worry about numbering it. Since we're probably not going to find anything that's going to be perfect size-wise, I'm just going to go ahead and add in another component, and we're going to do a cube. And we're going to go ahead and stretch it. So all I'm really wanting to do here is just make something that's going to be my checkpoint. That should be fine that way. And let's thin it up so it's not totally screwy. Point seven five. Let's try it at 
0.1, so it's nice and thin. And we'll leave the color as white. Next thing you want to do is add another component, which is going to be a box collision. And I am going to scale this up as well, so it fills up the entire width there and fills the entire checkpoint area. If for some reason we're flying through the damn air and we still want to be able to hit the checkpoint. So anything, you know, right now, nothing's going to work, but we'll set up the functionality of it in just a second. So that's good enough there. That's going to be our checkpoint system. Now we need some functionality to it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of everything. The next thing you want to do is compost and save. You are in control of your saving features. We're going to select the box collision. We're going to add event on component begin overlap. We're going to compile and save. And my current character that I'm using for uh, the muscle car is going to be player underscore car. So from this on component begin overlap, drag out from other actor and cast to player underscore car. So the only thing that can do anything with this is going to be the player car. Now, we are going to need some other functionality. All right, so just for the sake of it, I want to have some sound. I want to hear that I've just crossed that um, checkpoint. Um, let's see here. No, we don't want a fart sound. Sound effects. Um, we want something. No, that's not going to work. Work it, baby. Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> Got some of your different freaking audio files here. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I should have had this um, planned out ahead of time. Yeah, that's not going to work either. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just go with... Um, not great, but... We're going to end up using that sound later. Go back to my Assets folder, create a new folder here called Audio... I'm going to drag that. I'm just in a folder right here in my, my browser, my file browser, and it's going to drag it in there like that. And it's there. What I want to do is create a queue for that. And then I also want to go in here and create a sound attenuation. I'm going to call that close. And we're going to leave that the way it is. We, we want the sound attenuation so that uh, we can actually have a bit of control. We don't want the sound going across the entire map. When somebody completes a checkpoint, only the person that goes through the checkpoint really needs to hear it. So I'm going to go back into my um, sound cue and got this. We don't want it to loop. Uh, we don't need anything else. We're just going to change the attenuation settings to close and save. So now, um, what I want to do here also is get this. We want to get world location. And we're going to drag from here and 
play sound at location. We're going to use the fizzle cue for now, lack of a better sound. Plug the location in, and we're good to go. That's all we need to do for that. So in theory, there, we, we heard the sound. So another thing I want to do here is this cube, I don't like that it's white. It blends too good with the uh, the sky. So I'm going to look at my materials. I'm going to change it to red. Go back to here and click that. And there we go. So now we'll go in here to play. We can actually see it a little bit better. It stands out. So we know that it's doing something. We know that we hear a sound whenever we pass through it. So we need to actually add in got my camera set at 6, speed-wise. Now let's jack it back down to 4, which is the default. Alright, so this is the, a checkpoint. This isn't the start-finish line. So we're not doing the lap counter just yet. So what we need to do here is we have access to this information, and we also have access to the player. So let's go ahead and open up the player character, or player car in this case we're going to need a variable. And what I'm going to do here is we've got this. We can also add in another component of an arrow. The arrow component is going to be something that we can actually use for gathering information. So it's pointing in the direction that we should be traveling in. And instead of leaving it right there, because we've just completed that checkpoint, we don't want to trip that checkpoint again. So I'm going to move that over here, get that away, and why are you different? B0. That's all you, all you need to be is 0. So we're moving it ahead of the checkpoint for the location of this arrow. So we go back to our event graph, and we can actually get this, get a reference to the arrow. What we're going to need to get is a transform. And why a transform? You'll see in just a second here. Get world transform, because a transform is going to give us a bit more information. We're going to need a variable. checkpoint location. We're going to make this a transform because this is going to give us our location, our rotation, and our scale. We're not screwing with the scale at all. But we could get this and now we want to set. We're going to set that as a checkpoint location. Now, in our player character, I'm going to create a new variable, and I'm going to call this our respawn checkpoint. Doesn't matter what you call it. You can call it a frog picker all, for all I care. So we're going to do that. We're going to hit compile and save. So we've got a base value right there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set up some functionality here. We're going to keyboard R. So when I hit the R key, this is going to be my reset button. Now, we're going to have to do some other things too, like stopping movement and things like that. But let's get it started. <coughs> now, this is not going to be replicated yet. I'm going to have to come back and do multiplayer replication so that um, we can actually get this, well, well, go ahead and set it up now. Get our our variable needs to be replicated. Okay, um, and let's go ahead and do, even though it should not need it, I'm going to go ahead and put it there anyway. But with that right there, we're going to go ahead and create a custom event. And we're going to do client set respawn location. 
you can call it whatever you want make it nice and short if you want um, we're gonna do multicast probably gonna have to change a few things around here but this is gonna get us going and what we're trying to do here with our client we're trying to um, set actor relative transform hmm. we'll try it this way first but I'm sure we're gonna have to come back um, but we're gonna grab this and plug it in here and we're gonna set this to teleport and more accurately change the name of this client respawn call so we're the clients wanting to respawn and it's wanting to set the actors transform to the current location here so if that works and it may may not don't know we're going to do another custom event and server respawn call same basic thing here but what we're going to do is make sure that we run on server for replicated we're probably going to have to play with the reliable stuff in these because sometimes they work good sometimes they don't and what we're going to do is switch has authority when it comes to vehicles that can tend to be a little bit weird and then the authority here we're gonna say client respawn call which it's just saying okay they have the ability to run this and then from here when we press the R key we're going to um, we need to do a few other things. Can respawn, and we're going to make this a boolean. Now, um, we need a branch node. Plug that in there. We we'll press it. We are then asking a question: Can we respawn? If we haven't set this value yet, the respawn checkpoint, we need to be able to get this. So how do we get that? Well, we're going to go ahead and add the functionality in, and then we'll go ahead and set that up. And we're going to do server respawn call is what's going to happen. If we can respawn, then that's what's going to happen when we press the button, the R key. So off the event begin play, and we're just going to create a custom event and then plug that into the event begin play. And um, custom event is going to be checkpoint passed. And with that custom event, I'm probably going to have to restructure this. I, I'm just doing this off the top of my head here. Um, we're going to then set can respawn. Um, you know what? I'm not even going to do that. Um, we're actually going to let the checkpoint handle that. So the first thing we want to do here, set can respawn to true. So once we have passed the very first checkpoint, we can now respawn. So by default, if we hit R, it's not going to do anything because we haven't hit a checkpoint yet. 
So now if we come over here, we just passed that. We're going to come to a stop. Hit R. And it's not in the right location. Put us right there. Why the hell did you put me right there? So, on component begin overlap, what's going to happen is we're trying to set the checkpoint location. We need to now inject this information to this respawn checkpoint. So, from our player, we want to set respawn checkpoint. So let's drag this out, plug this in here, plug this in here. The reason for doing that is now we can take this and shove it in there. So now we're, we're setting that checkpoint location. Oh my god, I'm so excited, I wish I could wet my pants! Dude, thank you so very much, I do appreciate that. Now let's see what happens when we, we try to hit R nothing so we go through the checkpoint we're good and we just crash we're stuck hit R and it's facing the wrong direction okay not a problem checkpoint go here go here um, let's put it here and rotate it around you're too awesome dude Absolutely too awesome. Now let's see if I fixed it. Through a checkpoint and uh, crashed. So uh, it's correct. All right. So that's good. Now, if we add more checkpoints in, if we don't add more checkpoints in, and like, oh crap, we just crashed, went off the track. Hit R is going to teleport us back to the last known checkpoint that we have completed. Why is my phone making noise? So, let's actually create some more checkpoints. You don't have to copy and paste. You can actually put them wherever you want to now. Um, go into the gadgets folder, and now whenever I'm ready to add a new checkpoint in, say, okay, we've passed this corner. Awesomeness. Yeah, I, I saw a lot of people that were, were trying to use this um, the spline actor thing, and it was set for 4.11 and uh, version of UE4. See, we've got our arrow there, so now all i get to do is just place it where I need to place it. And, you know, I've been wanting to rebuild Motor City Online for a long time. Damn EA for killing a game that was cool. So nothing, we can't respawn now. Now we can respawn. Now if I come over here and go through this next checkpoint, because I haven't fixed the um, the vehicle controls yet, and they suck, <laughs> until I fix the, um, the traction and everything else, now whenever I respawn, it respawns me at this checkpoint. So it's reset my checkpoint to this one. So now all you got to do is just keep putting checkpoints in wherever you want. And let's put another one in here. And because we put an arrow in there, you can see arrow is facing the wrong direction. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but now we can do that. You can put as many checkpoints in as you want. You can build your maps however you like. But it's just that easy with that little simple checkpoint system to um, place them into your map. Just make sure your arrow is pointing in the right direction. That way if you've got a really complicated track that really is has got some complicated curves and things of that nature, then you know you want your player to be able to respawn you know, like if they go off the track. Uh, You've also got the option of doing, like I mentioned before, was uh, actually taking uh, the big box collision in a blueprint and setting up a um, a system to where 
if you fall through the world. It's a box collision that you hide underneath the world. And um, it essentially does the same thing. It will grab the same checkpoint system and it will, it will automatically respawn you at that location at your last completed checkpoint. So if, you know, God forbid you do fall through the world, you have a fail-safe system for your players so they're not, I fell through the world. I lost a race because I fell through the world and I couldn't respawn. And yeah, you can you can fix that problem quick and easy just by creating another blueprint. That's essentially the same thing as a checkpoint, but it doesn't have this pretty cool um, uh, checkpoint flags and poles and everything else. So this was just a, a quick throw together just to get the idea. You can actually put numbers on them. You can put words on them, whatever you want. I just wanted to have something that would symbolize what's going on and because the default UE4 um, uh, vehicle controls are so terrible <laughs> yeah like I was saying about the, um, the fact that so many people are like oh, well, I can't get it to work you know, update it to 4.2 or upgrade it to whatever version I'm like um, it works it works just fine Showed in the last video how I'm got it set up with 4.2.2 or 4.22.3 or you know the latest version of of UE4. It's working just fine. And if you missed, what is that? Oh, it's sitting on top of the track. Um, I can take this checkpoint BP and grab this, this, and this. Do this and no, you asshole! I'm trying to go down. I'm trying to go in any other axis but down. Right down by twenty. Yeah, but with so many people saying, "Well, it doesn't work. It doesn't work." Um, yeah, I kind of proved that it works. I'm not even looking at my arrows on here. Um, yeah, completely wrong direction. So we're setting the flow of our track, too. Okay, that one's good. So I'm assuming that I did it right on the other ones. So I, I think it, it's cool to have the old-fashioned checkpoint system. Um, oh, arrows in the wrong position. Uh, the game Motor City Online, said a, a lot of people played the game back in the day, and it was cool. I mean, it was different. You know, you had the other Need for Speed franchise games that were essentially all about running from the cops or whatever, you know. There, we got a whole map full of checkpoints. So now, hit the tab, go to the interior view, and we can race. Since the R key is set up to replicate, oh, oh you suck! Unreal Engine 4 is damn vehicle dynamics. Um, Come on, get on the damn track. This is such a wimpy ass thing. I'm stuck on nothing. Hit R, respawn. So, yeah, that's our checkpoint system. All functional and should be replicated. Now, the one thing I've noticed is when you get past a certain RPM, the engine sound just die. <laughs> and I, I didn't write the script for that. I actually used what was in the advanced vehicle template. So that's that. We need to go ahead and create a start finish. And our start finish line should be right here. We should actually put it about where that is. 
still need to stop the car whenever we're there. I have difficulties with that part. Um, <sighs> set vehicle speed to zero. I've tried a bunch of different ways. And um, stop movement immediately and things like that. I will figure out the best way of doing that. And I'll, I'll show that in the next video. But this should be properly replicated. Um, I doubt that that's going to be necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. Respawn checkpoint. That's good. So let's go ahead and create the start finish line. So when player starts right there, they're kind of hard to see. So about where this one right here is, that's where we're going to put the start finish line. So let's go back to gadgets and let's create. Actually, I'm going to take the checkpoint. And I am going to duplicate that because I can dig the other uh, models. And then I'm going to go ahead and rename it to finish underscore line underscore BP. And in this, we're going to go to our box, and I'm just going to simplify this. The um, I change the material color to blue. For the cube, here we go. That'll symbolize it's our start finish line. And go to our event graph. So, got all this. And I'm going to get rid of this and this and this and that for right now. So, we're back down to this. On the on component begin overlap, we're going to cast to our player. And let's go ahead and go to our player. And we need another variable. Now, temporarily, this variable is going to be in the, the player blueprint. But I would say it probably would be better to put it in the game instance. Um, let's go ahead and put this in a comment block. Respawn. Compost and save. All right, now let's go ahead and what do we want to do? Um, let's go with lap number and let's just make that an integer. Compost and save. Now, here's where the fun part gets on. Um, the first time we pass it, if we go through there, then what's going to happen is let's grab this and delete that. If we just place it into the map, I know it says finish line, but it's going to be our start finish. So I think we could do some simple mathematics here. So this will be our start finish line. We're going to go ahead and save all. To uncomplicate this, think of Monopoly. Um, Pasco, collect $200. Um, I don't know why that's relevant, but we're on lap number. We would go through it the first time. Then we need a variable. Variables are going to be the bane of our existence. We're going to be doing variables until we get gray hair, and I've already got it. And I swear if my neighbor doesn't quit with that damn motorcycle at 11.30 at night, but like 30 minutes ago, he was doing burnouts on his sidewalk in front of his house with his loud-ass rice-burning crotch rocket. Makes you want to go over next door and just pistol whip the shit out of him and remind him what manners are, are for and how to use them. So, variables. We need a variable. We've got a lap number. We want every time we go through the start finish line to set our lap up by one. But since we, we're going to trip through it the first time, then we need some way of saying have we passed the initial start or, or, or the finish line? Um, we need to come up with a way of, of 
of saying, hey, I know you just passed through the, the finish line, but was this the first time? I hope you guys follow what I'm saying here. So let's say I'm just going to actually do it. Um, variable um, first lap. I, I can't think of another better name for it for right now. Make that a Boolean, compost, and save. So from that, we need to now have something in the finish line blueprint. We don't need the checkpoint location. We don't. We don't, We won't need that. So we need to tell the player, "Hey, you just passed the checkpoint." Um, so let's, let's go ahead and we're going to end up needing a branch. And let's go ahead and create finished lap one. I, you know, I, lack of a better way here. So did we finish lap one already? How are we going to find out if we finished lap one or not? Um, hmm. Well, we've got to go back to our player again. And first lap. Let's start off with a custom event until I figure out a better way. Custom um, lap system. Okay. So I know we're going to need a branch. Lap number. And is it equal to equal integer to zero? I have a thought in my, my little pea brain, so we'll see if I can actually get my thought process to actually work and say, yes, this is what I actually need. Um, well, we're not technically going to be on lap zero. So, are we, when we, 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 we trip the, the beam, are we now on lap one? Is the first lap we're doing around the track is lap one, correct? Then if you pass the start-finish line again, you're now starting on lap two. I think that makes sense. Okay. Um... Yeah, that's that's. <laughs> so we don't need that. Um, we don't need that, and we don't need that. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll keep it simple for now. And what we're gonna do here is get lap number. And then we want to set lap number. To our lap number plus so integer plus integer plus one. So simple enough. All we're doing is we're getting our lap number and setting it to a plus one. And it's setting this variable in here. We don't need... We may need that. I don't know yet. Um, we don't need the first lap variable. Do compost save. And let's go ahead and create the lap number widget that's just going to display for right now. So if we hit play... Um, whether we're in car... Out of car, in car, out of car. Um, say bottom right hand corner. Go to my UI folder, widgets. Going to create a new user interface, widget blueprint. Um, Lapse underscore W. I, we'll end up creating a whole new system later on 
to have speed and other things like that all combined into a, a central player HUD. I think that would probably be better in the long run based on your view. If it's your interior view, it's located here. If you're in the exterior view, it will be located there. That can all be done later. Um, but essentially all we need is something in the bottom right hand corner and since I like to have it surrounded by you know something just to kind of separate it let's go ahead and anchor this to the bottom right go to color and opacity create all black and we'll do 0.5 so it's still kind of a ghosting effect through so we can see through it and then we we'll grab some text and call this our lap number and let's center it up in that box anchor it to the bottom right hand corner and we should have enough room in there but I'm gonna move it over just a little bit more anyway then we'll grab another text and we're going to change the text over to say 99 just want two digits anchor bottom right and we can shrink this box down actually not yet we we'll go to font and I'm gonna raise the font size just to make it a little bit bigger All right, I know it says 99 right now. It's not going to show up on screen yet. We haven't set the functionality just yet either. But I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to click on Content, Text, Bind, Create Binding. Create a little bit of room here. We're going to cast to player underscore car, which is my car, and... get player character and what we need is get lap number and we're going to take that integer and plug it into there and it'll convert it over to text Um, it doesn't like that. So get player. Mm. You don't like that either. Okay. Using UE4, you fail. So get player pawn. Do you like that yet? Yes, you did. I knew I was going to end up having to use that anyway, but get player pawn, and I don't want this to be get text zero, so I'm going to say get lap number, so I know what the function is, compost and save, and in the event graph, again, I hate to use event tick, but it'll work. First off, compost and save. Lap number. We're good to go on that. <sighs> Do we need to? We don't. We don't have a need to deactivate that. So I'm not worried about this. This is good. We're a designer. Everything is bottom right. Bottom right. Bottom right. So that's good to go. So lap system. We'll go ahead and use this custom event, and we're going to create a widget, and we're going to call it our lap widget. No, I don't want get owning player. Get player controller. And what we want to do here is add to viewport. 
Compost and save, and let's go to our event begin play, which is right. Ha! Let's create a little bit more room, and let's go ahead and move you over because we want to always kill that damn mouse cursor and plug in our lap system. So. We're on lap number zero, so as soon as we pass the checkpoint, we are now in lap one. However, what's to prevent some little sneaky butthole from doing this? There's a three lap race. Oh, I'm on lap two now. I'm a sneaky little butthole. I'm just going to do this until I get all my, my laps done. And I won the race because I'm a cheating butthole. Yay, three laps, I win. All right, so... Here's where we can do one more thing. The player won't know about this. This is not something that the player will see. you got your checkpoint. We, we need to create another checkpoint. And... We want this one to be invisible, or we can make this to be our last checkpoint. Um, there's so many different ways we can look at this. We know that we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There is 12 checkpoints. Alright, so if there's 12 checkpoints, we know that there's 12 checkpoints. One way we can do this is with our player character, or player car. We've done our lap system. So that we know that we're, we're upgrading our lap system here. And we'll have to create a branch and another variable. So we need the system to know that, okay, if we, we're going to do this track with 12 checkpoints. If checkpoints equals 12, then can cross finish line, essentially, is what we want to do here. So let's go back to our gadgets and checkpoint. So we're, we're already referencing our character here, and we're doing all this. We're setting the, the fact that we can respawn. Oh, please, you know, anytime you'd like to catch up on Real Engine 4, that would be nice. Today, please. Thank you. Um, so what we need to do is create a checkpoint. Um, we'll do this. Add a new variable. Checkpoint number. Or, um... Instead of just being a checkpoint number, um, let's do lap completion checkpoints, and we're going to make this an integer, which is a whole number. We're going to expose this number so that we can actually have lap completion checkpoints. So we can actually put this down here on our checkpoint. We know that it's checkpoint number 12. It says 13 here, but we know what's what. Um, so again, let's confirm the number of checkpoints. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we do have 12. So our checkpoint... Oh kind of love that. Ah, cramping my forearm. So, lap completion checkpoints. Um, so, what we'll do here is get lap completion checkpoints and we want to set lap completion checkpoints. So what we're going to do is, every time we, we pass a checkpoint, 
we're going to add to this. We'll plug this in here and we will do plus integer plus integer so we're doing a plus one each time we do this now in our player car um, and we'll have to go back to our finish line and put a condition in here also um, so in our player car we want to can we, we need to ask can we complete the lap so on our lap system let's get lap completion checkpoint probably going to change these names and let's actually change this um, Well, we'll just do equals, so we're going to do this and this. Let's add another variable in, actually, and unplug that one. We're going to change this one to checkpoints on map. And we know that this one is 12. So we'll put 12 in here, plug that in here. I could have just promoted that to variable, but yeah, whatever. So now we'll do this. If it is equal to this, um, bam. No, we don't want it in here. We want it in the finish line. All right, so in the finish line, we do want something in here. Um, lap completion checkpoints. I guess we can do this and let's get the, the variable from the cast 2 player and we could also promote this to a variable as well but um, what we need is lap completion checkpoints and checkpoints on map get checkpoints on map because we're going to need to reference this number. And actually we already have this number here. So let's go ahead and do equal. So if this is equal to that, then we can advance one lap. So in our finish line, we are setting our lap number. Let's move that over. Let's put a branch in. This seems complicated, but it's something you're going to have to do to keep players from cheating. Um, so, lap checkpoints. Is a plus one, and if it's equal to the 12, then go to our player. And our variable can complete 
lap. And we'll make this a boolean. Compost, save, checkpoint. We need it from the player. Set can complete lap. To true. We don't want to do anything on faults. Um, my brain is like sizzling right now, making sure that I've got this correct. So we passed the finish line. Okay. Um, so now can complete lap. So if we are allowed to complete a lap, then we will increase our lap number by one. I, in my brain, like I said, it is absolutely just baked right now. So we have not completed any laps right now. So therefore, let's see if we can cheat. We passed checkpoint one. It did not advance a lap. Let's go ahead and respawn. So the carrier is back to the last checkpoint completed. Or that we passed through. If we turn around and go the opposite direction, the wrong way, which that would be something nice you could add on to your, um, your checkpoint, is add text on the back of it that says wrong way. <laughs> so if you're going the wrong way, you know you're going the wrong way. So let's complete one full lap and see if it advances our lap. Oh, crap. <laughs> These driving mechanics are just absolutely horrible. I'm not worried about them right now because I'm trying to make things work. I will tweak and screw around with that, but if anybody is really good with tweaking the vehicle dynamics based off of the, um, the wheel of vehicle, please let me know. Oh, for God's sake, would you turn? Damn. Completed 12, and look! Um, but I have a sneaky feeling that it's broke. Yeah. So, we've done it, and now... Every time we pass through it, we're going to gain a lap. So, guess what we need? More verbals! Um, or setting the variable, because we don't want to sit there and and cheat and have someone just backing up and going forward, back up, go forward, and win race. So after completing one lap, now they can do it 100% of the time. So... We are saying can complete lap. Um, let's look at the, the finish line. It's asking, can we complete the lap? If so, then we're adding a lap to lap number. Then let's go ahead and set can complete lap to false. So we've added the number to it, and now we're setting it back to false again inside of the finish line. So in th theory let's verify we did not gain a lap for just doing the start finish line we back up through it it doesn't do it so we actually have to complete a lap so in theory what's going to happen is we'll finish the race and or finish the lap and then it's going to advance our lap counter and from there, after it does that, and, and it says, okay, you can do it, you can have a lap number, you've, you've completed the number of checkpoints available to complete a lap. Um, so now you can have 
a plus one to your lap counter. But now you got to do it all over again. You've got to get all the checkpoints. You've got to complete 12 checkpoints again in order to add one more to your lap number. Now with this system like this, if it's working correctly, anybody can hit this last checkpoint and take any shortcut they want to be able to complete a lap. So now let's, we just got our lap number. Let's back up through it, see what happens. No free lap. And no free lap. It work is. We could also put on there where we're counting the lap number. Since we know that we have to complete 12 checkpoints in order to, to pass, go and collect 200 bucks, um, we can actually put on there um, checkpoint 1, checkpoint 2, checkpoint 3, and so forth. So every time we, we hit a checkpoint, it advances our checkpoint number. So if you wanted to add that in there, it's the same thing. Just where you've got lap number listed right now. You could just add it, um, another binding and get the number of checkpoints you've hit. It's very simple. So we're going to complete lap two. And if you guys got any questions on this stuff so far, let me know. Oh, see, that's why I completed that lap. Um, it did not advance my counter. Because we didn't return our number back to zero. Aha! Um, finish line. And here, can complete lap. Um, we've got our checkpoint list right here. So we need to get this information right here and return it back to zero. So lap completion checkpoints, um, lack of a better name. Um, get lap completion checkpoints. No, we want to set it. Set lap completion checkpoints to zero. So we check this and plug it in right there. So after we've done all this, we're setting this number back to zero. And yes, I'm going to have to drive all the way around the track twice again. Technically, everything should be replicated for right now. And it should be working relatively cool. Ugh, just the vehicle driving mechanics suck. Uh, don't get stuck right there on the lip of the frickin' track there. Um, you can always lower the track down a little bit and that'll solve some of that issue. You can also add guardrails on too. That would actually solve me hitting on there. And with this um, thing, the way it's set up, it wouldn't take awful long to actually set up the freaking guardrails, which would prevent me from falling out of the damn map like this. You know what? Just respawn. <laughs> I guess I probably should have put the, um, the checkpoint counter. That way I can physically see that um, once I cross the finish line, it's setting my crap back to zero again really suck if you completed 10 checkpoints and you had two checkpoints left you take a shortcut you pass in here and try to cheat um, yeah as soon as you cross to that start finish line and you haven't completed all 12 <laughs> your shit goes back to zero so that's a nice little anti-cheat accidental feature so if it's not equal to the, the number, like right now we have 12 checkpoints, um, if you haven't completed all 12 checkpoints and you cross the start-finish line, it resets your shit back to zero. So we're going to try to cross the start-finish line one more time 
see if it allows us to get completion on the second lap. And I think that's where we should stop for this video. Um, you guys want to see more? Let me know. I'm going to keep working on some of this stuff here. Um, yay! So, we have completed lap two. And... We can't cheat our way through. Yay! That's awesome. I am going to go ahead and close out that. That. And on this, our viewport, there's our arrow. And I'm going to go ahead and, like I was saying here, I'm going to put text on the back. So I'm going to add a component, text, render. And wrong way. I'm going to change the text to actually say wrong way stupid. Because <laughs> I gotta. And rotate Nande. We'll make that bigger. Our font. Um, world size. We just want to be able to see it say, hey, you're going the wrong way, stupid. Good enough for me. So now, why are you on the wrong side? Why are you on the wrong side? Uh. No, I'm moving you this way. You go in the correct damn direction. What in the hell? Okay. So now as we go through, if we look back, hey, wrong way, stupid. So you gotta go this way. That is delightful. Save all. And there we go. We can create, you know, or we can get um, flags and banners and all kind of cool stuff. I try to go this way. We can see wrong way, stupid. All right. Only the last thing to check really quickly is um, we hit play, change it to two players, new pie, because everybody likes pie. Shit. Um, Well, that's no frickin' bueno. Player start to F. You're at 112, you're at 112. Let's just go ahead and put them at 150. Why did it start? Okay. Yes, as always, I know that I can change 
the um, the window default size, but I don't want to because whenever I'm doing this and I'm not streaming, then I've got it on a different monitor, so it's, it's fine. So here's client. I'm looking at the left screen, but the the car that I'm driving is on on the right screen. So this is our client. The only thing I had to check was will it count for the client getting the lap and not cause the server to get the lap number. All I really wanted to see is um, make sure that we're not dead in the water for running this in multiplayer. Since I'm running this on the my simple multiplayer Steam template, um, then um, yeah, the um, thing's multiplayer. It'll work off of the Steam architecture. All right. Yep. But we have some positional issues, and I think I may know why. All right, we're at the little line right before the checkpoint. The first checkpoint. But where are you? You see, server going by. But the client shows to the server that it's all the way over here. But it's not. It's right here. As I'm driving, you see, I'm not sure why the hell it does that. But the basic clue that I've got is you see I'm coming up. I'm on the right. Um, it'll stop dead or now. And look, it just freaking vanished. The client doesn't see the server at all now. And now he's back. Okay, what the hell? Alright, so the, the problem that I ran into with this positional stuff... Yay! So, let's do that. We just respawned. We know that the respawn is actually replicated. So what happens now if we drive by the, the server? Not a damn thing. So, respawn. Notice that if I add the vehicle template to a project, you're all the way back over there, according to this. So if I add it, let's see there. Yeah. If I add, let's see if you go to add new, add feature or content pack, and you add in the vehicle system, it has that positional error. But if you create a new project, and when you're creating that new project, and you select that new project as the vehicle type it doesn't have that issue. The issue with positioning only seems to be whenever I try to do that. I try to add new and add the vehicle template to it is when I get the positional issues. Um, you can see right there at the start, I mean everything is everything's good to go. But 
yeah, it gets kind of screwed up after a while. So there's a sync issue with it by adding it to a project versus creating a project with it. And what I've been doing is whenever I'm setting up the project to use my simple multiplayer Steam template, what I've been doing is I go to... Yes, I know, way too many projects. Um, I go to my simple multiplayer Steam template 4.20. I right-click and I select clone and I do it that way. And that way it keeps all the stuff that I need for my multiplayer stuff to work right off the get-go. But, for some reason, it, 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 yeah, I'm going to have to just add the simple multiplayer Steam template to a project that I create with the um, uh, vehicle template right off the bat. I just need to create it with a vehicle template and the um, whatever polygon assets I want, the track generator uh, stuff um, and all that and then I can migrate over my simple multiplayer steam template or I can manually copy in the files because whenever I'm setting up the simple multiplayer steam template I have to go to um, in my documents inside of um, not content oh let me show you what I'm looking at here plugins you got the plugins folder have to add in the advanced sessions folder into there that has to be done in the individual uh, project itself instead of the old way of doing it where you just added it in as a, um, a plugin you have to do it this way and then in your config uh, was it default engine Yes, I know, I got the text size a little bit larger. I was doing something, I just never changed it back. Um, you have to add in this information right here. Has to be added in, actually I think, all of that. Um, but, as you can see, the Steam Dev App ID is set to 480. If you have your own app ID, you would change that to whatever your app ID is. This is why whenever you're doing the simple multiplayer scheme template, and it shows that you're playing Space War, it's because that's the app ID for Space War. It's a dev app ID. So, and it's valid to use for demos and stuff. But as soon as you create a Steam project and you upload it to Steam and you get hosted on, on Steam where people can download it from there, then you need to go back into your files and put your dedicated Steam app ID that you get from Steam. But <coughs> you just have to add this information into um, your default engine.ini right there so that, uh, <coughs> yeah, I can make it work better. But for now, we're going to call it because <coughs> <coughs> it works. Just with the multiplayer, like I said, I'm, I'm probably going to have to remake this entire project all over again. I'm going to look to see if there's any way I can rectify that situation without actually having to just delete this and start from scratch all over again. Although, I've only got about an hour and a half into this project. You know, hour and a half on this stream, and about 30, 45 minutes max prior to the stream to make this whole project. So it's not like I'm going to lose out on a whole lot of stuff. I'm drifting like a pro there. Um, so it's not like I'll lose much. And... crap. Um, but if it'll fix the multiplayer issue of the car is not showing up correctly. And not syncing correctly. Yay, there was much rejoicing. Alright guys, let me know on Discord. Um, 
what you want to see on this project. If you want to pitch in and you have, um, for right now, the Polygon Town Pack, or I'm sorry, Polygon City Pack, and, yeah, yeah. Um, I did not enable local network. In fact, let me actually um, go into the UI folder and widgets. Actually, the map that I'm doing now is called Test Track. I'm going to grab that, hit F2, Control C, and in my widgets, main menu widget is where it's configured. I did not use LAN. I just did not enable it in this system because I, well, I didn't see a need for it, but you're not the first person to ask about it. Um, I mean, I can rewrite it for um, the ability to do LAN. It won't be that much to actually include that because, you can see right there, use LAN. I mean, I could check that box, but what will have to happen is I'll have to come back in here you see you got the connect to steam to play and all the this functionality here uh, I would have to go in here let me actually go ahead and load the main menu map and we'll look at this like it's a standalone which actually you can play it in standalone game one thing I don't have which you know, if you hadn't uh, caught me up on this, then I would have forgotten to put the escape menu functionality in here to get the escape menu to work. So that'll be really quick. So you can see you got a Steam username and avatar that shows up here. Access Steam community while playing. That all pops up. Whenever you go to multiplayer, you go to host. What I can do, besides add in a map list uh, later on, the whole thing will be changed for this project that I'm doing. But for the simple multiplayer Steam template, where you're doing server creation, what I can do is add in another section either right here or right here or wherever else, and a little checkbox. You click on the checkbox and it'll just say use LAN, and then it will, will work on LAN. Um, then you can still put whatever you want for your server name and make, but with that LAN switch, all it would be is just a little checkbox right here. Um, remind me to do it because I'm old and I'm you know I forget things uh, but remind me on that um, and I'll get you a copy of it you've did, donated enough to where you know if you don't already have my simple multiplayer steam template you've more than earned it so um, just remind me and I'll, I'll shoot you a copy of it um, I've got it set for 420 if you want to use other than 420 um, newer or older the um, URL for that let me see bookmarks I've got the, the direct link to the plugin for that the, the simple multiplier steam template I don't know if you've watched the other videos on that but it's retarded simple to use um, I've been using it for like almost two years. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you even want to go all the way back to 4.7, 4.9, 16, 17, um, 15, 4.22, um, the new 4, um, uh, they don't have the new one yet. No. The, the new version's in beta right now, but 4.23 is coming out soon. But if you're using 4.22 or 4.21, 4.20.4, whatever version. If you're using 420.3 uh, or .4 or whatever version, just any of the 418, you can skip. You don't worry about the .3 at the end or the .2 at the end. So if you're using 419 or 418 or 420, then all you would do is just download this. Um, if I remember correctly, 418 or 419, you didn't have to actually have the plugin in the project folder. You could actually put it in the UE4 folder. So just let me know what version you want it for, and all you would have to do is just download this version right here uh, of the plugin, and then, but yeah, add that into the um, 
the project. I can show you right here. Um, this is the one that I'm working on right now. You just create a plugins folder inside your project and then just drop advanced sessions folder. Inside there, it has all the other stuff inside it. And yeah, it's super simple. But yeah, when you're hosting or if, if you want to find a game, um, it does work through Steam. So if you and your buddies have Steam, then the, it's, it works. It works just fine. Um, the one thing you have to do is make sure that whoever's playing is on the same Steam region as you are. And if they are not, all they have to do is change... Um, yeah, 421, all you would have to do is just go to that website, download 421's um, plugin, and make sure that you go into the plugins folder, you delete this folder, and just drag the advanced sessions folder into the plugins folder for the project. And there you go. You're already using the advanced sessions plugin. Well, then there you go. I mean, it, it, the new version of it has to be inside the project. And if you already got it in your project anyway, then all you really have to do is just migrate this stuff into there, and it should work out. If not, then let me know. I mean, you can hit find lobby; it'll search. But um, you know, like I was saying about, um, come on, with Steam. Looking for it, and it's on the other one. Yes, I was playing Sniper Elite last night. Oh no, I'm playing Space War. Space War is running. Because it's using the Steam app ID, um, developer app ID of 480, you're going to see that you're playing Space War. Your friends will see you playing Space War until you actually spend 100 bucks and get an app ID from Steam. Um, but yeah, all you have to do if you've got buddies that I'm in the east coast of the U.S. and you're on the west coast of the U.S. All you have to do is go to Steam in the top left, Settings, go to Downloads, and under Download Region, you see I'm using Charlotte. Just change that to anything that, for me, since I'm on Charlotte, anything on the east coast of the U.S. You could set it to Atlanta or Charlotte or, you know, uh, New York City or whatever, but since I'm on Charlotte, you can change it to Charlotte. It might affect your, your ping a little bit, but um, all you'd have to do is just change it to that, and when you get done, just change it back to whatever your original was. So that allows anybody in the world. I've had people in um, Algeria and in Indonesia and um, uh Thailand and Germany and you know people all over the world connecting to my hosted game um, I gotta fix that sometime or another so it's supposed to go back and forth between the two and if you hit the button a second time it actually hides it when you host a game um, it's easy to add in uh, like a map list and you just put a check next to the box but if you check another one, it removes the checkbook from that box and so forth. That way you can select a map. And you can put whatever you want for your name and make. And whoever's joining your game will be able to find it. And there will be much rejoicing. But the one thing that I did not do yet is get the escape key. And there's no way of doing that to close it. So you have to manually kill it. And all I'm going to do is, since my simple multiplayer Steam template comes with player underscore base as the primary character. Um, it's got V for view change, so you can actually um, go from first person, third person view. Uh, it still has all the original inputs and stuff. It's got a startup to create a player HUD, so you actually have a health bar. Um, you actually have health already in there. So, you know, you've got the startings of lots of stuff. But the escape menu, all I got to do now is just grab this. If you create your own custom character uh, blueprint, just come in here and copy this. Let's go that and go into my player car and then control V. And now I've got escape menu functionality. And the escape menu. So we'll run this again. 
it'll alert me. Like I said, all you got to do is just change out the um, the if you create a new project with that using the clone method or if you just want to migrate the stuff over um, I will get you the link to the 420 version and just so change the plugin that's inside the project so you're actually just changing create a new project first with this and delete go into it after you've already created without opening up the project just delete this and then put in the, the the 421 version and that should get you all set. So hit single player, come in here, drive around, everything's awesome. But now if I hit escape, I get I can go back to the main menu or I can hit resume game. So having the escape menu, I, I like escape. You can change that to whatever key you want. Um, hit main menu and exit game. If you want to use something besides the um, escape, all you have to do is go right there, click on escape, input key, and set it up to whatever you want. PS4 controller, Steam controller, Xbox, Android, motion, keyboard, just go keyboard, and select whatever key you want, and it'll automatically change it. I like escape because it's, you know, normal, but all you have to do is just click on this and the escape menu thing and then click right here in the drop down box and tell it whatever you want it to be. Pure awesomeness. So yeah, send me a DM and I'll go ahead and get you a link to that so you can download it. It is, like I said, beyond simple. Do a quick save all. I'm going to close that down and Let's see here. This is a, a screw around version when I'm hacking up on. But this is the actual version right here that you'll actually get. I never open this project. I never do anything on it. I clone it and then do all the stuff from there. But SMST underscore 420. Um, or I can just quit being a lazy bastard and um, go ahead and create the 421 version and the 422 version and just upload that. All it is is changing the, um, the plugins folder. Don't restore. So this is what you actually get in, in that. You'll want to run it as a standalone game because if you run it in selected viewport, it's going to say go connect to Steam Dummy. If you don't have Steam running in the background, it'll say the same thing. Go connect to Steam Dummy. All the buttons still work, but if you go in here and run as a standalone game, you'll see the Steam functionality work. So you can see it's SMSD. It's going to boot up, and there's my Steam username and avatar. Access Steam community. Single player will just take you into the single player map. Hit escape, go back to the main menu. Go to multiplayer, host, make. There we go. There's much rejoicing. And I can go back to the main menu and exit game. So that's basically what you're getting. That's all you're getting. Um, in the UI folder, widgets, main menu underscore widget. Oh, you suck. Get up there. And the, the graph and the make server button, whatever the name of your current map is you want it to load to when you hit open level. If you're just doing one map, then copy and paste the name of the level in here. Where so instead of it saying lobby underscore map, replace it there, and then scroll over to the right where it says on clicked SP nav button, and change it there as well. So if you hit single player, it'll go in there. If you want to make you know functionality for our, another map, then go with that. Yep, let me go ahead and um, I'll get you that link. I'm going to go ahead and drop stream. Um, I got your DM. I'll go ahead and get the link, send that to you. And uh, if you have any questions, just, just DM me. And if anybody else out there loves me enough to make donations, I'd give you free stuff too. So it, it's beyond easy to work with. You, said you can always just migrate this over. Um, right click, um, migrate, and just push it over to whatever project. 
No worries, brother. No worries. I've had a drink sitting here and a glass full of ice, and the, the ice is now water. And I'm trying to force myself to drink um, minimum a half gallon of water per day. And I had a frozen half gallon of water, and that's already thought out, too. <laughs> so, yeah. I got a lot of water to catch up on. But, well, thank everybody for watching, and we'll get back to the project soon. Um, probably be doing more Wednesday and Friday with this project, with the, uh, the car stuff. But I'm going to take a break, and I'm probably going to go, of all things, I'm going to play Warface. It's a free-to-download, free-to-play game, so... Um, but I will get that to you. Let's do this. And drive. What the hell? Wow. Well, it's because I've changed all my settings so that, um, I know you can't see what the hell I'm doing because I'm on another monitor. But um, I have pretty much disabled a lot of the, the garbage cookie stuff because I really hate tracking cookies and I, I really hate that people are, are selling my freaking browsing information. I don't want everybody to know my, my Pornhub browsing. I mean, uh, my, my, my web browsing. <laughs> they have no need for that. Let's see here. Get shareable link. Have any problems with it, let me know. Well, there you go, and we will see everybody later. Love y'all, and not just when it's cold. We'll see you.